happily again because of technology, we can do an awful lot of this uh, robotic work, as I call it, uh, where students don't have to go and uh, try to memorize all the voicings that are possible mathematically. For example, uh, we were looking at three notes at, at one time, uh, C major, and it's called a triad in universities. And you, again, you get a nice A plus if you know all four triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented. Uh, music allows for several approaches. One is the intuitive, one is academic, and one is scientific. Uh, scientific meaning more mathematical. Although we appreciate historically uh, Western tonal music and so-called masters, I won't say so-called, that's a pejorative, uh, because th they had limitations as well. But there are 55 possibilities and we are generally just taught four of them. Major, minor, diminished, and augmented because so much music is based on those four. And an excellent job was done by those masters uh, in, in just using those four. But there are 55, which leaves 54 underutilized or un, unknown to many music students. And as a matter of fact, music, I always say, tends to laugh at all of us quantitatively. So, uh, music that's based on this. It's based on this chord. Okay, a lot of it. So uh, that's just one of the possibilities. But all these are available to you musically if you know how to use them. So it's a matter of appreciating the mathematical possibilities as well. Uh, in the convention that we're in now, and one we've been discussing, uh, we've talked about certain uh, tendencies that melody has, and we didn't exhaust it by a long shot, but uh, there are tendencies, there are conventions, and that uh, students need to know some of these rules, in quotes, uh, and how they work. And we talked about the chords having, major chords having all these notes, uh, and minor chords, and minor sevenths, and all those. So it, it behooves the students to know those. There are sets of things, and that's what happens in simultaneity or simultaneously. And it's good to know what happens in music simultaneously, because then there are many ways of spreading them apart. Uh, one way to spread them apart, for example, if I had uh, terms of language, there's all the resources for a C major chord, C major seven. Uh, C major nine, all of the above, but here's here are all the all the resources for you. Now, if I play this chord like this, some of the notes were left out, okay, intentionally, because that it may have come from and go and going somewhere that required that particular uh, simultaneity. Now I've got a, a one six nine three five. I left out the raised 11, and I left out the 7. Can I do that? Yes. May I do it? Sure. The idea is that there's a, a group of techniques, four of them as a matter of fact. And if I were in classroom, I would say, please say pure, please say additive, please say fractional, please say fractional additive. And I would have students understand those notions because they are maximally transferable notions and uh, very, very important to know. So when I played that chord, I played a fractional chord. Now what does that mean? Let's do it in a simple way. There's your C major chord. If we assume that we're in an academic setting where all this is not either appreciated or taught or understood, then let's assume that this is the whole notion, C major. Uh, now, in order to play that chord in different ways, spread them out, or voice them, uh, because each note is called a voice, and when you look at a chord and it's way spread out, uh, we one, two, three, four, five, six voices, uh, an analogy to the human voice. Okay, here's C major. Whenever you play this chord, 
and you use one of these notes more than once. Okay? So instead of just C, E, G I've got here now, I'm playing G, C, E, G. You heard G twice. That makes this an additive voicing. I've used them all. I've used C, E, and G, but I've added one. So that's an additive voicing. That's an additive four-part voicing. Now I've got two C's and two G's. That's still a C major chord, but I've added. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. All the notes are there, all the letters are there, C, E, and G, but we've got quite a few of them. I have two E's, two C's, two G's, and there's that third C as a matter of fact. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we said the right hand sometimes plays four notes and left hand can, can play three. So that's C major in an additive way. Now, if I wanted to play C major and make it fractional, just take one away. And the argument would be, well, isn't that simply a, an interval, not a chord? Well, it depends on which context you're using it in. Sometimes one note can serve as a chord. If I'm playing... The listener hears that as a major chord, okay? because we're conditioned to it, it, it hears it as well. So one note can serve. So we have fractional and fractional. Out. If you have a chord like this, take one away and then start to double, you've got fractional additive. You've added to the fraction. Okay. So I guess we're talking just generally about the fact that chords don't always come out in pure form, where nobody is doubled and everybody is represented once, which is pure. We're talking about having to treat chords uh, in a quantitative way, okay? So I don't know of any chord, any voicing used by any musician that's not one of those four. Uh, and the good student would ask if, it, if that division is uh, exhaustive and mutually exclusive, the answer is yes, to answer a logical question about that. So there are ways of voicing it. Again, uh, you can ask your students to spend several years cataloging all the possibilities or you have them available to them technologically. And the choice then becomes semantic and a matter of choice and experience. Some of this work that wouldn't have been possible years ago to catalog and make available in sound, orally, A-U-R, uh, and graphically, we need to do that homework. I guess if there's an emotional uh, underpinning to all of this, it has to do with doing the homework for the children that would make their studies both relevant, uh, new, true, and surprising, or therefore useful.